Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, and thank you for stopping by. All right, guys, this is a Tuesday afternoon edition of the Bullet Point Sessions. Now, what we do in these Bullet Point Sessions is we do a supplemental view on our 9 p.m. slot. 9 p.m. slot, we're the cutting edge of the Second Amendment world. We talk about political news, talk about gun news, gun control, gun rights, the why behind what politicians and media are doing and where it's going based off those assumptions. But bullet points a little bit different. We talk about opinion. We talk about things that allow a little more personality to come out. And we meet these leftist ideals and leftist articles head on. We focus on editorials. We focus on interviews. Things of that nature where the left intelligentsia of the world, our betters, put out constant things. Well, they've never had a voice to fight specifically this in this format on a YouTube channel that I've seen until right now. So that's what Bullet Points is, and that's what we're about to dive into. As always, everything is linked in the description box below. And I want to know what you guys think on this. But today... We're going to talk about an editorial out of St. Louis. Now, just some backstory. This St. Louis editorial is referencing a letter that gun control groups sent to Biden, basically ripping him a new one. I just did a video on it. It's a scathing letter. Thumbnail looks like this. The card is right here. And that is also in the description box. If you want to know the full detail, check that video out because it's been received pretty well. And it was a, I enjoyed making that video because it's really good uh, alignment into their viewpoints. But that's a really good thing to add into this. But now... Let's dive into the reaction from this St. Louis editorial because it really speaks and gives you a window and a vision into what they're thinking. And in my, pro in my um, perspective, this is their problem. Lots of arrogance, lots of tone, lots of um, tenor of this conversation, which needs to be addressed. Let's dive in. I want to know what you guys think. Gun reform advocates frustrated that President Joe Biden has put on the back burner his campaign vow to finally address America's gun violence epidemic are calling for the creation of a new top level office to spearhead the issue. That would be an appropriately high profile approach to a national crisis that has been allowed to fester for too long. Decades too long, in fact. And that's just the intro. <laughs> Wait till we get going. America's political dysfunction is perhaps nowhere more evident than guns dysfunction. So you're labeling something on guns as dysfunction. Is it possibly because we don't agree with you or is it because you agree with the second amendment or is it because you're smart and I'm dumb? Wait till you hear the rest of this little paragraph and then we'll get there. Despite pr broad public support, even among gun owners for basic reforms, basic, they're couching it as basic. If you don't agree with this, you're the extreme. They're, they're narrowing the focus. Basic reforms like universal background checks, for gun purchases and restrictions on military style firearms and high capacity ammunition magazines. Congress has been deadlocked for years. Explain to me which part of these are basic. Those are the left's full desires. They've been talking about banning ARs and banning military style rifles and large capacity magazines and universal background checks for like the last, I don't know what, 10, 15 years. What about that was basic? But what they're doing is they're couching everything in basic. If you're outside of this, then you're crazy, even though everyone who disagrees is a majority. It's important because that's how they're framing this. Now, let's continue. That's in large part due to the National Rifle Association demonization. Got to have a target. What do we always talk about? The left has to have a target. Not just the campaign money it wields, but its dark success at whipping up the noisy minority of Americans who stubbornly oppose any gun restriction whatsoever. So basically what, he's, what this person is saying is if you oppose any kind of gun restrictions that I agree are basic, so AR bans, mag bans, and universal background checks, then you're crazy and you are stubbornly ignoring progress. Does this start to sound familiar? This is why they're disliked. This is why they have a problem with appeal. Not just the camp campaign money it wields. Ooh, money's bad, right? Except unless you are a, a progressive leftist, then money's okay, but it's other people's money's bad. But dark success at whipping up the noisy minority dark success. You mean a majority of the country? Basically anything in the middle? Is that, is that what you mean? Is that the minority you're talking about? No, it's not. Because you think that everyone who disagrees with you is an idiot, is adult. Might just be you might look in the mirror. Just saying. That dysfunction is the reason that no director of the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms and Explosives has received Senate confirmation since 2015. 2015. That's only six years. That's in the middle of the Trump presidency. Actually, no, it's not. That's in the middle of the Obama presidency. It's saying, is it that is it the dysfunction's fault that there's not been an ATF director, or is it the fact that the ATF directors that have been nominated have been too far left and too far extreme, and the rest of the country is not in line with that? But because it's your ideals, therefore they're you're right and they're wrong. So it's a dysfunction. Do you see what they're doing? If you disagree with me, you're dysfunctional. That's called arrogance. All right. 
Biden nominee David Shipman is the latest to languish. There's languishing again, because that was referenced in that same article. So they're pretty much admitting Shipman's done. Despite a long and impressive career with the agency, <laughs> because he had the gall to speak frankly in the past about the need for reasonable firearm restrictions, he flat out said ban firearms. He didn't say reasonable. Now there it is again. First they started with basic, and then they said all the extreme cases. Then it's reasonable because he had the gall to say something about basic firearm restrictions. Interesting, because he's extremely extreme, so much so that you're not even getting Democrats to vote. Just saying, if you put someone forward who was actually respecting the Second Amendment and did their job dutifully and didn't try to adjust and bend the rules like they're doing now to basically curtail policy when they can't make laws, they're trying to interpret laws, maybe you might have something to do with it. But no, 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 no. We're dysfunctional and stubborn, and we've been whipped into a frenzy. We can't think for ourselves because the NRA is evil and has dark money, and they made me angry, so therefore I am angry. And I don't like you because yeah, I don't. That's the point here, guys. Like They, they put this, this just stupidity on their opponents because they're so arrogant, and that's part of the problem. But, you know, whatever. Pride goes before the fall, right? The letter makes a series of recommendations, most notably calling for creation of an Office of Gun Violence Prevention to act as a staging point for federal gun reforms. Okay, <laughs> skirt. Most notably calling for creation of an Office of Gun Violence Prevention. So something that is not through the Senate, is not confirmed by the legislature. You just want to put someone in who has power to get your ideals passed because they're common sense and basic. Does that sound like superiority complex much? I'm not going to go through the unanimous decision-making process. I'm going to do it my way because I'm right and they're dumb. Just saying. Since the head of such an office wouldn't be subject to Senate confirmation, nothing wrong there with someone just being instilled with power, the White House would be able to avoid letting this urgent issue become mired in partisan procedural games. You know what? I don't want to have everyone discuss and make the decision for you know us as a nation. No one should ever have a voice. It should only be the far leftists who know what's best for everyone, and we will tell you, the little people, what you'll be allowed to do because we know better. The process is in place for a reason, and they just don't seem to get that because their ideas are too far left to get through the main course of process. But because they're smarter than everyone else, they should have a final say, and they should count twice as much. So much for equality, right? And that's, what, that's why I brought this article to you. When you rip away emotion, when you take emotion and you put it overlying everything else, you start to see what's truly underneath. And right here, you, we turn this rock up and you're going to see a lot more negative stuff than you are positive because they're letting it show through. The veneer of civilization on this editorial is gone. And you're starting to see the arrogance, the condescension, and the anger. And that's what I have for you tonight. Let me know what you guys think, because this is what we're fighting in 2022, and this is the ideas that we need to counter, and that's what this channel is all about. I will see you tonight at the 9 p.m. slot. I'm Braden, signing out.